Joey Gar. Greetings, I am Tad Larkin, the lore master of Mandalore. And today, I'll be digging through the archives to bring you technical readouts and the history of the E-Wing Starfighter. The E-Wing Escort Starfighter was manufactured by Frytech Incorporated for the New Republic, around nine years after the Battle of Yavin 4. At a length of 11.2 meters and a cost of 160,000 credits, the E-Wing was built to be the spiritual successor of the Incom Corporation's T-65 X-Wing Starfighter. The craft could achieve speeds of up to 120 megalites in space and around 1300 kilometers per hour in atmospheric conditions. To give some perspective, it may not be as fast as an A-Wing Starfighter, but it could definitely keep pace with a TIE Interceptor. It was also far better armored than the X-Wing, allowing it to tank hits that would otherwise blast apart the common X-Wing. The E-Wing's armament consisted of three medium laser cannons and two proton torpedo launchers, with an ordnance capacity of 16 proton torpedoes. Like most starfighters within the New Republic's arsenal, the E-Wing was equipped with a hyperdrive, a class 1 to be exact, pretty standard among starfighters of this time period. The E-Wing was a single-seat fighter, with a cargo capacity of 100 kilograms and up to a week's worth of consumables. Early models of the E-Wing included an astromech droid socket, however, a special astromech droid line had to be created to interface with the E-Wing, the R7 series. However, later models of the E-Wing, such as the E-Wing Type B, were able to accommodate the more common R2 series astromech droids. Frytech Incorporated began designing the E-Wing sometime after the New Republic's proclamation, five years after the Battle of Yavin 4, and one year after Emperor Palpatine's death at Endor. It wasn't until Grand Admiral Thrawn united the squabbling warlords of the fractured Galactic Empire in 9 ABY that the first iteration of the E-Wing began being fielded by the New Republic. However, the E-Wing was used sparingly during the Thrawn campaign, and appeared in no major engagements that I can find presently in my research. A year later, the E-Wing was used to much strategic effect during the campaigns of the resurrected Emperor Palpatine, who secretly cloned himself prior to his death at Endor, and, through the unnatural abilities available to him through the dark side of the Force, transferred his Force essence into one of his clones. When Palpatine invaded the pristine water world of Mon Calamari, the E-Wing played a crucial part of the New Republic's efforts to defend the planet, and although it cost them dearly, they ended up coming out on top, thanks to the E-Wing. They were also fielded at the subsequent Battle of Pinnacle Base, which saw the destruction of one of the Eclipse-class Super Star Destroyers, and the Battle of Onderon, which saw Palpatine's final defeat and shifting power for the New Republic. During the waning years of the Galactic Civil War, E-Wings were even being used in some of the most famous fighter squadrons in the New Republic, including Rogue Squadron, of whom Koran Horn had his own E-Wing. The E-Wing would go on to be used by the New Republic during the Yuuzhan Vong Crisis, and by its successor government, the Galactic Alliance, in the Yuuzhan Vong War and Second Galactic Civil War. Though the E-Wing, at least I feel, was meant to eventually replace the T-65 X-Wing, it had a few reliability and technical issues that no doubt had New Republic and Galactic Alliance fighter pilots favoring the classic X-Wing. This transmission was initially suggested by Anne Kakukishi. If you have any suggestions for future transmissions, don't be afraid to drop a comment. In the meantime, keep your comm channels open for future transmissions. And don't forget to subscribe. Tad Larkin, out.